I was, <laughs> this like it was like you were taking giant ice cubes and shoveling <laughs> them into a glass <laughs> like wheelbarrow. I didn't have it aimed directly at the glass. I wasn't thinking about that at the time, but All I right. did. I'm gonna try and do this show without either throwing up or pooing my pants. No promises. That's fine. All I'm right. a long way from you. I can't smell you. Yeah. Oh my God, is that rum good? Holy piss! What are you having there, Florida Kanye? What year? Radio. Oh, I your yeah. What'd you say? That's why I want you to go on the radio. With your voice, you'll be sensational. You're listening to the Five Gallon Podcast. What do they want with us? There is no doubt that we are dealing with a mechanical monster. What's he talking about? I think it's an experimental model operated by a crew of midgets. Bringing you the best of independent music from around the globe. Wait a minute, what goes on in here? Five Gallon Podcast with your host, Corey Coates. What's up, Jacob? Not much. How you doing, man? You know, I feel like between you and I now, uh, there's things that there's more things we can't talk about than can. <laughs> Why is that? I'm not a lawyer yet. No, but I feel like it's not just your, your chosen profession, but uh, our history. Oh, just because it's been so long? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's been a while. But I've been listening in, so I've been keeping up to date on your life. Been peeking in like all the crazy people who are watching this right now. What are you waiting for? Hit play! This is Matt Pryor, Polish the Broken Glass. Look away. On the Five Gallon Podcast. Very nice. We can just we can just shoot the shit over the tunes. Sure, that works. Catch up on things. It's been too long, man. It has. I was... Tr- I, it, uh, the, the year anniversary of me coming back happened at some point. And I don't remember what happened. <laughs> you don't remember what happened that day because it was so foggy, or like you don't remember coming back? I don't understand. No, like like I I, I think about uh, a week ago. I just looked at the calendar. I was like, holy crap! I've been here over a year, like since I got back from Costa Rica. But I don't even remember what the day was that I came back. Hmm. I remember when you left. It was wasn't it a little bit? Uh, you were at my place last before you left. Is that right? Yeah, because I was going because it was out by the airport. And uh, we, or that direction, and I got, who did I get? I got one of the taxi drivers from Inlingua to pick me up at your place and drive me to the airport. Oh, I feel like Maria probably took you to the airport, yeah. Probably Maria, yeah. I just, yeah, now I distinctly remember you staying at my place. You were there for a couple days. Yeah, that could be. That sounds right. Is it because we're old and we can't remember things well, or things just aren't memorable? Yeah, uh, I mean, I spent a lot of, well, I don't know. I probably spent, what, 10, 15 days out there the whole time I was in Costa Rica? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you were a fixture. No one no one beats Woody, <laughs> though. Woody wins uh, the number oh, yeah. of days that... I, Woody, I think Woody really likes me. I get that impression. Yeah, he spends a lot of time around me. <laughs> <laughs> I should talk to him. He <laughs> pretty much wants to be you. See, I tell everybody that... If you uh, if you ever go down to what is this? We got a commercial up. Mm, oh, if you're watching the live feed, there's probably a commercial. Yeah. Oh, I thought I had it. It'll be over in thirty seconds. Oh no, I just thought I had it. Oh, I muted it, but now it decided to unmute itself for the commercial. Wow, it'll, that it, was smart. It'll do that too. It's it's a. <laughs> yeah. Wow, there's I like know. marketing people behind that. I know. Uh. I tell everybody that usually if you're if you're down there, everybody falls into one of two camps. They're either um, they're like me, where they went down there and they had a plan for getting out, and I'm only going to be here for a year or two, and then I'm going to do X, Y, Z. Or they're like Woody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go down there and they just kind of don't leave. Well, you <laughs> you probably don't know what just transpired and and what Woody and I are doing now. Uh, no, I don't think so. All right, Woody uh, just quit his job. And he's, uh, he's, where was he still at in Lingua? Yeah, he, he, was, he was me, basically. And okay. He, he quit that to move out here to Hako, and we're going to take over the Global Tiesel College and start up a Tiesel school here on the beach. Ruh row. Ruh row. Yep, it's going to be good, man. That's going to be awesome. I know, I know. So it's going to be good. I'm going to manage it. Uh, Andre's still up in New York. He's going to be co owner. And, uh, and Woody's going to do all the courses. You guys are going to make a killing. Oh, we're going to do really well, dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Between Woody and I here in Hako, we're going to clean up, dude. In every 
possible interpretation <laughs> of that phrase. I think the good thing is, though, is because, you know, one of the things I loved about Inlingua is uh, teaching was great and everything, but I really liked managing teachers and I really liked doing the teacher training aspect of it. For me, that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. So I think it's kind of taking the best of uh, what I liked about my job for the last six years and incorporating it here in Hako and right. doing it in a town that I really believe in. I really dig this community, man. It's so cool here. Yeah. I tell you what, I, uh, you know, I don't remember Lincoln as a memorable place when I was growing up, really, but it is just blowing up right now. It's been really fun to watch. I almost moved there. I think I told you that, right? Yeah. What uh, Was it a recording studio? Yeah, it was a record label. It was? it was a record label that, that wanted to hire me to go out there and work full time. And, oh, yeah, that's what it was. For. And it was. It was Lincoln, Nebraska. And I was really excited because it was it was kind of a good idea and it was a good deal. But it was also at the same time where you know, record labels were really changing what they were. Yeah. And uh, and they were kind of becoming obsolete in the form that they were in. I mean, now they're, they're actually really coming back as something that's relevant and necessary again to, right. to sort of disseminate information and filter through a lot of the crap, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because it's sort of cool. Like there in Nebraska, like one of your big labels, obviously Saddle Creek, yeah? Yep. And it's great because like it, it it's, they, they create sort of now a genre or a taste uh, around their labels so where you when you listen you know if you buy a record from an artist on saddle creek it's going to have a kind of feel to it you know yeah it's got that kind of rawness to it right so if you're a big fan of of, of connor or whatever uh, you know mm -hmm. you, you know that you're going to get a pretty good chance that it's it's like when you buy an acdc record you know what you're going to get yep and yep. Uh, i think that's what the labels are becoming now it's like it's sort of a an aggregator of a particular taste or genre yeah, it's kind of a, a, a macro sound. Yeah. Are you playing much? You singing much? All I've been doing here is uh, church stuff just because I found this church that'll uh, they actually pay me, which feels weird. Mm. Um, but I, I just go and it's like, you know, read this chart one time. And sometimes I sing, sometimes I play lead, sometimes I play bass, sometimes I play acoustic. And just kind of go jam out and they hand me a check. Nice. So, but I haven't been doing nearly as much as I'd like to. I've actually got, um, that's another fun thing about law school is you get people from just all different phases of life that end up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got some kids who come straight out of school, some kind of like me, but you get people who, like one of my good buddies was a musician out in Portland for like 12 years. And uh, so he's talked, you know, quite a bit about wanting to try to get together and do some stuff. And I've seen him play a couple solo sets. And, I mean, he's the real deal. I don't. I don't know why he quit. <clears throat> Interesting. Mm -hmm. How about you? You've been, uh, I remember you were still trying to get that stupid piano fixed when I left. Yeah, well, it wasn't my piano. I just left it behind. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting till when I go back, I think this summer, uh, if I get home for a week or two, there's a really nice Korg that I really like. I think it's called the OV2 or OV1 or something like that. Anyway, it's super, okay. super great because um, it's got not only killer piano sounds, but it's got some great vintage synth tones and the organs and everything are amazing. So I went yeah. home this summer for a visit uh, for like three <clears> weeks <throat> and I finally got my hands on one because, you know, you can't you, you can listen to the samples on the Internet. You can read the reviews, but it's like I'm not dropping twenty four hundred bucks on a thing I've never touched. No, no. So I went home and I got to touch it and it's like, ooh, I really like this. So I think I'm going to get one of those. We're coming cool. back. Stand by. Five gallon podcast. Amazing, huh? Wow. Yeah. We're balls deep in independent music. I came across like I've got this now, uh, this little, this silly little iPad Mini, and I say silly because I love it, and that's what I say to things I love. You're silly. It looks kind of silly. It I'm is kind of silly, but it's God. It's changed my life in a lot of ways, in good ways, and it's it's got. I'm a reader now. Yeah. And I hated reading before, and I came across a book. You might be interested in this. Uh, it's the Wahoo Ching. The uh, the lost teachings of Lao Tzu. Ah, I'm pretty excited about it because this is apparently a collection of again another 81 verses that have been passed down uh, orally over the last 2,500 years. I see. So the story after the story. I don't know if it's that or not because there's part of me <laughs> as I'm reading it. It's like, well, if these are the lost teachings, then how do they find them? Right. And... Or why were they? kept secret or whatever sure or how is it only now that these are really coming to light uh but they're pretty good yeah. man i if you're if you're out there looking for something to read because i know you don't care about stuff like this so much anymore but maybe if you do this is pretty good 
Well, you know, I don't do any reading in these days, so I could pick something up. I, I understand that law school, there's really not a lot of reading involved. Not at all. No. no. You just, uh, you just uh, learn it all by osmosis. I feel like I'm trying to make myself uncomfortable here because I've got a picture in front of me and uh, it's, it's, of a, it's a friend of mine from high school. She's a very attractive girl, uh, but she just won a, a big female bodybuilding competition. Really? Yeah. But I, I, just, that, I have mixed feelings uh, here about this. Well, yeah, if you pull it over by the camera, we could... You want to take a peek at it? Well, I'm just trying to figure out what kind of bodybuilding you're talking about here. I mean, could she beat me up? Oh, she, well, she can beat all of us up. There's no question about that. <laughs> but she's not bulky big. She's just like super muscular. Like very okay. muscular. Like those thighs are pretty muscular. I'll send you a, I'll send you a picture on Facebook and you can look at it there. How's that? Oh, okay, that'll work. But I don't know how you feel about that. I, like, let's say like she's good looking. She's a great looking girl, but she's a bodybuilder. Yeah, no, that's that wouldn't be for me. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's too. Yeah, that's just disparity of power in a relationship. I just don't. No, I, I don't want to feel. I don't want to be afraid when I come home. <laughs> let me send you. Uh, let me send you a picture here on Facebook if I can. Because it's pretty weird, man. It's. I mean, it's pretty weird. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I mean, we're. Uh, my girlfriend and I are trying to really you know get into working out here and trying to we're still young enough that we can theoretically you know, <laughs> change things okay so we're trying to do it now and we're just i'm struggling man it's because like i i like lifting i do not like running so i make myself run but then i lift and then you put on the muscle and then you don't lose the weight and then you just Oh, it's impossible to do something that you don't enjoy. You know what? Yeah. I'll tell you. There's two. Th well, I can. If, I won't bug you with it, but there's a lot of things that I I did in the last couple months that completely changed my physique. What are those? Uh, number one, fuck sugar. Yep. Sugar is the enemy. Number one. Yep. It's not fat. It's not. It's not salt. It's sugar. Yep. And number two, fuck dairy. Dairy, really? Yeah, and it, like it's not like I have the cheese every now and then and that kind of stuff. Oh, there's a great picture. I'm gonna send this to you. If that's not that, it's that the it's drinking milk. I used to, I was a big milk drinker and stuff. Eh? That made a big difference. A huge did you drink, difference. Like skim, or did you drink like whole milk? It doesn't or? matter. Milk is milk. And, the, and somebody put it to me so well. They said, "Well, if you want to lose fat, stop drinking baby cow food." <laughs> like. Like, and they're like, well, basically, this is designed to take something that's 200 pounds and make it 2,000 pounds in as short a period as possible. <laughs> so that's what you're drinking. And you're saying, I can't seem to lose weight. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute, that makes a lot of sense. And at the same time, like, I, I just love milk. I love milk in, like, I love cereal. I love a nice glass of milk with a sandwich, that sort of thing. Yeah. I so I switched. I went to almond milk. You know, okay. and, and then I just I slowly started getting into a weird thing where um, I, I watched that that uh, movie. I think it was called Food Inc. Yeah, I've heard of that. That's is that the one about just the kind of production preservative? Yeah, and types? you know, yeah. At, at the end of it, it's just you start feeling like, wait a minute, why am I eating a lot of this stuff that comes in packages? Yeah, you know, where you go to the grocery store and it's like I'm just when you start thinking about all of the things I'm buying, there's no difference between the content and the plastic bottle. It's the same thing. It's all plastic, no. basically. Yeah. yeah. So as I started just kind of eating fresh, and it's like, why am I eating two eggs here when I can just have a egg? And instead of eating like <laughs> a, a big meal for breakfast, you know, I have, because I'm, I'm lucky, I get to work at home, right? So I get to pick right. away at things over the course of the day. So it's like my breakfast is over the course of a couple hours. You know, I get up and I have a nice cup of coffee with almond milk and a natural sweetener. And then after that, maybe I'll have like a hard boiled egg and a half a glass of orange juice. And then maybe later in the morning, I'll have like a half a banana and some mango. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's one thing I really miss up here, man. It's just all those... Fresh food. Having that fruit available. Oh. And then just putting it into your diet. Instead of like... Instead of mayonnaise, now it's just I just whip up some avocado. Oh, yeah. And dude, it's just Wait. like completely changed my physique. Yeah, see, that's... I mean, I do pretty well. I, I haven't thought about the dairy thing because I do eat a lot of dairy. But that's because I try to stay away from... 
you know, sugary stuff. I'd rather have protein. Um, if I can't have that, I'd rather have a little fat. If I can't have that, then I have sugar. You know, it's kind of that order. And dairy is usually a pretty good way to get that if it's lean anyway. Yeah, so for me, it was like for diet, cut sugar, cut dairy. I mean, don't cut dairy. I mean, I still have, like, I still get a nice block of asagio oh, cheese or, you know, I still have butter on toast every now and then. But again, like, you know, kind of, it's sort of fuck carbs. Get rid of those carp- complex carbohydrates because basically they are sugar. It doesn't mean get rid of them forever. It just means don't have two or three slices of bread every day. It's like have two or three slices of bread a week. But mm-hmm. the, the the big change, man, for me is that now I'm living in a place with a gym. Oh, yeah. So I go down and I do, I, I have, I only work out three hours a week. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's miraculous, the change. It's miraculous, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a big difference. And it's because have you, running have you is, gotten to a point where you feel like you're kind of plateauing on anything or are you just kind of on a ramp? You just keep getting better. No, I just keep getting, I mean, I've, I've plateaued in terms of the weight that I'm lifting, but I'm not looking to get bulky. I'm just looking to, to tone. Mm-hmm. And the cool part is, though, is that I found um, that it, I, the best, I, I ran into a trainer basically here and he told me, I, three things that I need to know to to get the physique that I want. And he said, number one, he said, doesn't matter if you do 10 reps or you do three reps, it's you're going to get the same results. So he said, do like three reps of, or, or do three sets of 10 on, on the, on the universal machine. Right? So I'm spending literally 20 minutes in the gym. That's it. Mm-hmm. And then after that, he said, go run three kilometers and then go three, swim three laps in the, in the hundred meter pool. He said, do that three times a week. And he said, you'll be in perfect shape in, in six months. So I'm like, all right. Yep. I said, I'll, I'll trust you. I said, if you're telling me I only have to do three hours a week of exercise, I'm into it. And I mean, my whole routine from going to the gym to finishing up my laps is, is an hour. And mm-hmm. man, in five weeks, you, you, you know, when you start catching yourself in the mirror and it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, dude, I'm getting, yep. I'm getting like ripped. So it's really, really working. It's just, it's a combination of just kind of moderation, changed my diet a little bit. And uh, I've never been able to burn off fat so well by, by pumping iron. You know, I used to run, run like a lot, five, six, seven K, three, four times a week. Mm-hmm. Couldn't, couldn't get rid of belly fat. Couldn't burn off fat. Just, it just wouldn't happen. Cut diet, cut sugar and start pumping a bit of iron three times a week. And it just melts off you. Yeah. I probably make it about five times a week right now, and my thing is I go, I, I, sh- I don't do quite as much cardio. I should probably do a little bit more, but I have, our, my gym is about a mile from here, mm. so I run there, I lift, I run back, and that's usually for me right about an hour, but that, you know, I'm spending 40 minutes just on the iron, Yep. so I probably need to shift that a little bit. Yeah, and then what I do is I, I just like maybe every other weekend, the boys come out for the weekend or we go out and we party and stuff. And it's just like, you know, all hell breaks loose, whatever. I'm just going to eat cheeseburgers and drink whiskey and it doesn't matter, <laughs> you know. Get a six or 12 of beer and sit around and eat Sundays and stuff. It's just about balance, you know. Yep. I just don't want to yep. be one of those guys who's freaky with like spinach in one pocket and a dryer sheet in the other walking around like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Popeye the laundromat. Yeah. Oh, so let's see. Who else? Uh, how are uh, Paco and Greg doing? They're good, man. Paco, I think he's moved on. He's on. He's, he's working full time for another company here. He, I think he okay. finally got the job that he's looking for. They never gave him a full time job at Inlingua. Hmm. Um, and McNutt, he's done. When when Woody leaves, McNutt's leaving. I think he's going to go back up to uh, Chicago for a bit and and kind of reassess. He's I think he's just had it with this ESL traveling around and teaching. Right, it's it's a lot. Yeah, it is. It's exhausting. Yep. Yeah. All well, especially right. when you're doing it at that level and in a city like San Jose where it's like, you know, you can get anywhere. It's just going to take you a while. Yeah, it's too much. All right, stand by. Every week. It's easy. It's free. And it might even get you laid. This is nice to catch up with you. Yeah, it's great. You know, and uh, a lot of the people who are, we got a lot of pervs who uh, tune into this program. You know that? How do you know they're pervs? Well, because they watch the video. It makes them perverted to me. Yeah, it's, oh, it's kind of weird. Well, it's sort of a voyeurism. Isn't it more what you do with the video that makes you a perv? Do you think there's people who like mash it up? <laughs> I hope not. Yeah, I can see that though. Because I don't I don't broadcast video of uh, of you. It's just me. 
Right. Well, there was just a video of Captain Morgan while we were talking about that, so somebody might have been to that. I don't know. Interesting. Did you get that picture that I sent you there in the robot? Yeah, that's terrifying. It is terrifying, right? Yeah, I mean, she could definitely whoop my butt. It's too much. I can't do that. I, I just couldn't see myself. No. I don't know. Like, maybe, I guess, like, for one weekend, I could get a little freaky, and that would that would be kind of cool, right? Uh, I'll You've take mine just like she is. Mail. You've got mail. All right, I got, a, I got a letter in here, uh, and it says, Hi, five-gallon people. I, I'm going to guess that's me. <clears throat> I just picked up on your show and wanted to know uh, who the co-hosts are. Uh, who is Woody or Ayn or Harry or Ray, etc.? Are they other musicians or podcasters or bloggers? What's the deal? That's Jennifer from uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to, you want to field that one, Jake? Who are you? Uh, who are you people? Well, I mean, there are a few of us that are musicians, but I don't think that's how you met all of us. And a lot of us were just from Costa Rica and we kind of run into you and uh, you were our boss in a lot of cases. Yeah, you're all... And then you got all your Canadian buddies too. <laughs> it's your employees that, yeah. I, that I made come on the show. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, and just mean, friends, you really. Us out there. I just don't want to bring on a bunch of entertainment people, you know, like that are, you know, radio people. Sounds boring, right. doesn't it? Well, yeah, it just feels professional. We don't want to feel professional. Well, I, if, if this were professional, then I'd be getting paid for it, and I'm not. You're not? Well, I am, actually. <laughs> I do pretty, I do pretty well, kidding. to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe we could um, maybe we could try like having segments with entertainers. We could bring on well, people who... Well, that was who... that thing you talked about uh, the other week, right? That you were going to like call in and, and talk about the daily topics or whatever? Yeah, this hasn't transpired yet, and I'm still bouncing it off you guys because I'm trying to figure out what the best way is to, uh, as you know, I'm in the middle of a reformat, and I'm almost done. I've almost kind of got it the way it's going to be, but I just can't yeah. figure out what we're doing here now, like during this point in the show. Yeah, I mean, I like that theme idea. I mean, we used to do that to some degree in that you would sit down with your notepad and then whatever popped into your head, you'd write down, and then we'd get onto a segment and you'd be like, let's talk about chicken. Yeah. Funny you mentioned chicken. Huh. Is it? <laughs> it's kind of, but maybe this is the thing. Like, I, I don't know if we should uh, leave it that these kind of segments in between are just loose, you know, just people hanging out and then we play some tunes. Almost like you're just hanging out. Yeah. Isn't there a worry though that it gets like, it's a little too inside baseball. It's a bunch of people sitting around and the, as, and you know, as Jennifer here from Iowa, she doesn't know who the hell we are. And she's, she's wondering like, who the hell are these guys you're talking to? Now, why are they qualified to tell me about my indie music? Mm, that's a great point. Yeah, so go to hell, Jennifer, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 dun, dun. I, lo I love pissing off listeners. That's my favorite yeah, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> that seems to be kind of your pastime. It's that and being a beach bum, seems like. It's nice. They don't write back. <laughs> I have a bracelet. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you have a bracelet, you don't own pants. There are all kinds of things I've learned. I from don't the show. own pants. I really don't. Oh, God. Yeah, but you see, the, it's one of those things, like, if you look at her, her body, it's, if she weren't oiled up in a bikini and flexing, and you ran into her on the street, she's just going to be a fit chick. Yeah, especially as long as she's got, like, sleeves on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will totally do you, provided you leave your clothes on. <laughs> and don't clinch anything, because you might break me. Yeah, I feel like she can just snap it off. That's the thing. <laughs> and I know, the hard thing is too, and, and no pun intended, is that once I take all my clothes off, you know that momentary lapse of disappointment is going to cross her face. <laughs> just going to be like, oh. What's your favorite position? Yeah. That's the guillotine. Boom. Right. <laughs> the party slam. <laughs> this, Sleeper hold. I'm out of here. The camel clutch. That's. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be. <laughs> the boil. God, I would love for her to put me in the camel clutch. <laughs> you should tell her that too. She'll come down to Costa Rica. Yeah, I just hope she doesn't listen to this program. Yeah. Well, she can't hear this part, right? Yeah, but you know what I do? Well, I record the video as well, so people can watch the video after the fact. Oh. Yeah, that's the weird voyeur part. People actually aren't just watching this live. Um, 
people go and watch this video, sometimes exclusively, they don't listen to the show. They just do this. They watch this. Okay, one, that's pretty weird. Number two, how do you you actually know that they watch this but don't listen to the show? Are you like stalking these people? No, I get people who email me and say, uh, how come the, I, I, the video's not up yet? <laughs> like, I haven't heard, they say, I haven't heard your show this week. The video's not up. It's like, what the hell? That's kind of bizarre. Yeah, hey, people, weird. if you're watching this, you should listen to the actual podcast because it's way better than this. Well, that's the point is that it's, a, it's an audio program. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it'd just be kind of funky since, you know, I've got the bandwidth here and I've got the high def cam. Might as well just set up the camera, you know, but, uh, you know, that's how kind of every Saturday night ends around here. But now it's just weird <laughs> that this is what people care the most about. I remember like oh. Harry, Harry's a bit of a nutball, as you, as you know, a bit. And he, he's obsessed with the video. He loves having that video up before the even, before the audio even goes up. Is the video up? <laughs> it's just you like goofing around in the studio though. It's me sitting at my desk. Huh? Yeah. 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 Talking to you. Yeah. yeah well. well, it's weird for me because I'm trying to, our audio is ahead of the video, so I'm like <laughs> trying to guess like what you're saying. Harry does the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Harry does the same thing too. He watches the, uh, he watches the video while he's taping the show with me, which is pretty weird. Have you heard, have you listened to this Haircore on the More show that I do with him? It's getting pretty funny, I think. Not for a while. I listened to it some right when I came back, I remember. I think I listened to one around like Christmas, but. If you're, if you're bored. Uh, I'd recommend that you check out this show now. It's actually getting pretty darn good. <laughs> so what it, does it have like a... Do you guys still just kind of get on and just talk for an hour? Or do you have like segments now? Or we do. You... We have some segments. We play some tunes. Uh, it's getting pretty damn funny. Really? Yeah, straight up. Like we used to, when we were doing the show initially, like we were just kind of feeling it out. And we would just, instead of, you know, doing pre-production, we would just do shows and release them. Figure it out as we mm -hmm. go along and... And it was, it was for the first couple of months, I basically just didn't listen to the show. You know, we'd shoot the shit, I'd assemble it, I'd, I'd fire it up online. People would send me emails, because you're funny. And then that's, I just leave it at that. Right. But the last maybe four or five months, you know, now that I got this iPad thing, especially, and I have a little bit more time, I, I totally sit down and listen to the show. And it's like, it's good. It's getting really good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that. Do yourself a favor. We, we started playing a bunch of tunes and stuff as well. Uh, you know, it's like classic rock bands, which has been really fun. Oh, cool. So we're going deep into our catalog and it's like, you know, we, it's like we play some of our favorite like White Snake or Judas Priest or whatever, you know, and it's just, sure. it's been tons and tons of fun. I actually look forward. It's one of my favorite parts of the week is, is getting together with him on Skype and doing that silly little show. Yeah. yeah. You guys, are, I remember it being pretty goofy. Yeah. So who are, what's what are what's playing on the on the uh, actual podcast tonight? Anything new? Anything I should know? Um, I don't know if you're gonna know any of the bands that we're spinning tonight because we're going really indie with this new format. You know, you probably yeah. There have been some cool new ones. I got that uh, that South by Southwest torrent that you mentioned. Uh huh. So I've been going through that and putting it into my own playlists, and it's weird. I, it, there's so many where it, like it goes across that song. I'm like, God, I know I've heard this song. Where the hell have I? Oh yeah, podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. We we what we did though is that I mean the the affiliation with E Music is now is lesser than it was, and okay. it means that I'm playing less of the tunes that I found on E Music. And one of the things that we had was, you know, quite a few tunes that I don't really know what's going on in in modern pop culture in the U S. I have no idea because you know what it's like in Costa Rica. You just you're tuned out, dude. Yeah. And I didn't realize that a lot of the bands that I was starting to pull off e-music and play were getting very popular. They're, they're bands, like big bands that everyone knows in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it just became very defeatist to have an indie music podcast that's, that's purpose is to expose new music. And I'm playing oh, popular music that's on VH1 and MTV. Right. And I didn't even know that was the case, you know, until people started like quite quite angrily pointing that out to me. Because I noticed. Oh yeah, it's just it's just because the sound itself has changed. I mean, the the idea of having you know four on the floor and a banjo is just you know another song. Yeah, yeah. So lately, I've been just I've been going really deeper into into indie again and using the South by Southwest torrents 
and, uh, and and using that as my source. And the great part is, is that, uh, you know, I've always contacted bands ahead of playing their stuff, and they're always responsive. But now, for some reason, they're really getting into the show, and I'm, I'm contacting a lot of their publicists and a lot of their, their record labels. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting the same feedback now, which is really cool. A lot of them are saying, look, yeah, we get podcast requests all the time. Uh, go go ahead and whatever. And then a week later, I get another email from the, the label or the manager or the publicist or the band. And they go, dude, I listened to your whole show. It's like awesome. <laughs> like, Thanks. So, which is so cool because they're like, we just discovered like six bands we, we absolutely fell in love with. And we think your show is really cool. Now they're saying, can we like do a phone interview? Can you Can you call us and we'll like talk and stuff? See, but that's what you should do because you can totally keep the feel of this show, but do that if you just give them some random screwball t- topic and make them just flail on the air for a little while. Yeah, I think that's the key is that, you know, and there's there's um, there's a there's a big difference of opinion, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to do whatever the hell I want, honestly. But the, right. there's a lot of guys who are saying, yeah, well, if you're going to call the band, you should talk about the song, you should talk about the recording, talk about the music. And it's like, yeah, I get that, I do, but at the same time, um, you can just go to their blog and read about that, or you can hear somebody else interview them about that, you know? Yeah. And you can split some time. Like, you did the one with, uh, uh, who's the guy from Alabama a little bit ago? Um, oh, I can't remember his name now. He was talking about the, kind of his recording process going through. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, stand by. We'll come back here, and we'll talk about that. All right. Let's do it. I'm ready. So you know what? The hell with it. We can talk about it now. One of the most annoying things about people with podcasts is they fucking love to talk about their podcast. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> like, straight up, man. I don't have a lot of time to, to listen to a lot of podcasts, but I do listen to a few that I follow pretty regularly. And yeah. I, I found there's still even after all these years, a really nasty trend uh, where people do exactly what we're doing. They sit around for 50% of the show and talk about what they're doing. On that show. Yeah, on that show. It's like, well, we should do this, and people like when we do that. Should we do more of this? See, but yeah, but I, that was the thing that caught me when you first kind of got me into the show, was that you, ju- you did not care whatsoever what the listener thought. You just kind of <laughs> showed up, and you did your thing. And then the listener would yell at you for it, and you took some sadistic pleasure out of that. Right, so some uh, belligerence, really. Yeah. Is my, my redeeming quality here on the air. Yeah, belligerence and, and uh, self-hatred and hatred of the listeners, I think, was yeah, all kind com- of, you know. <laughs> complete disregard for the good opinion of other people. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. It was endearing. I think we got a new show tag. <laughs> that's, that's a t-shirt right there. But I think you're right. I mean, there's a point where, in, you know, for those that are, they don't know what the hell we're talking about. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about this during the tunes. Uh, you're right. We got it. When we're talking to these bands and these band members, I think it's critical that you do have at least a conversation about process and talk about what's getting them to where they are as artists. Yeah, because you can get something out of, you know, like you just said, well, you can read all that stuff on their blog. And that's true for some stuff. But when you talk about somebody like, you know, tell me where you were at when you wrote this song or where did the idea for the song come from or like what was uh, what were you pulling from, you know, when you got this crazy idea? You know, th- those are things that kind of come out in conversation in a very different way than when they're prepped and presented and written down. Yeah. And, you know, it's also because we don't have a producer here. So I'll tell you what, look, uh, to uh, <laughs> to perpetuate my narcissism, uh, I would appreciate it if uh, if you did this next segment uh, for me. What's the next segment? Uh, this is 30 seconds. Uh, Jacob is going to describe me uh, to the police uh, after I've robbed him. Uh, we have a white male headed west uh, down the beach wearing nothing but shorts. Uh, he has a cigar hanging out of his mouth. He's yelling something about Florida Kanye. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he stole of mine, uh, but he was pretty excited about it. Uh, he's ranting something, something about any music. Uh, uh, oh lord, he picked up the baby. Go get the baby. Save the baby. That was 30 seconds Jacob describing me to the police. That's pretty bad. After I had robbed him. On the Five Gallon Podcast. Well, oh, thanks man, I appreciate that. Do it now! <laughs> Do it! Yeah, that's the other point, too, is that we don't have... There's not a producer. You yeah. Know, normally, like in conventional radio, as I do all day, I produce people. And I tell them what they should be doing, what they need to change. And, and I have that objective uh, listener ear on, right? Right. Whereas in, in this program, 
I'm just sitting around on a Sunday night having a glass of wine, shooting the shit with my buddies on the internet. Right. I mean, you're still the producer. You're just not acting like it. Yeah, I'm producing from the engineering standpoint, but I'm not producing from the... I don't think I'm taking that objective here. No. So maybe I should get a producer. No. But like like a crazy producer, like a street bum, you know? Oh, that'd be fun. Like some guy, like some dirty dude who just doesn't know what's going on anywhere in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, hey, what do, you, what do you think about this? <laughs> what what would you think? change? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think so. I had, yeah. What was now? I'm, this is at the risk of, of being personally stupid. So just shut me down if I'm being dumb. But I remember seeing a little while ago you had a uh, a woman out there on the beach that you were spending a lot of time with. Is that a yeah. thing? Is that no, a, not, not a thing anymore? Yeah, not so much anymore. There was a girl I started dating um, late last year, just just prior to moving out here. It was a girl that I actually I asked her out. Uh, she's, she's like a, she's a project manager at Intel. She's, she's awesome. Um, really, she's really smart, really beautiful. She's great. Uh, I asked her out and she turned me down because she thought I was still married. So when she Mm. finally found out that I wasn't still married, she's like, Ooh, whoops. Hello. And, uh, you (laughs) know, we we went on a date just before I'd moved out here to the beach and, uh, we, we just hit it off. I mean, you know, when you go out for like, uh, let's have some potato skins and a couple beers, Mm -hmm. four hours later, it's like, we really need to go. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and uh we just we we went out for another couple times after that and just every time it was just effortless great great conversation really really got along well uh then i moved out here and she came out and we spent some time together and it just it just kind of it spiraled from there into something that was pretty great but at the end of the day um uh, i don't know man there was there was some differences i think that were were difficult to overcome yeah you know and i think the other consideration was that there at that time was another girl that that kind of held my heart ah you know and she wasn't here it's just and she wasn't available and she lives in the states so it was not really an option for me even really to date her um right but you know women are pretty sensitive to that kind of stuff they can pick up on it pretty easily oh yeah they got antenna for that stuff yeah so i you know i was of course being a man and just sort of ignoring it and going doesn't really matter. I'm with this girl here in Costa Rica and everything's going great, so I'm not too worried. Uh, but she mm-hmm. she always kind of knew, I think, in, in the bottom of her heart that there's this sort of, there's this other thing that's out there in the ether that needs to be, you know, resolved. Yeah. So it never got resolved. And the the thing is that we, we ended up breaking up because at the end of the day, and, and rightly so, she said, look, I'm not going to pursue a relationship with a man that I love and that I know has a future in hopes that whatever is going on or might have gone on or could go on with you and this other girl might or may not come to fruition. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't, right. that was not a sentence, but I tried. No, I know what you mean. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of it. We sort of, I said, well, look, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't know what to do about that other than to say, I can't change the way that I feel about this other person, but I can promise you that I'm not pursuing it. Right, and in some cases, that's just not good enough, you know. No, and it's that's that's a uh, that's not a fault of either one of you. You know, I, I think I can understand what she is saying there, but you know, you're being honest. Well, I think the hard thing too is that, it, for that it's it's tough because you know when you when I've been in, I was in a relationship for eight years, uh, and mm-hmm. you start to you know experiment with with different relationships and different ways on different levels. And you start to question what what love represents to you now, if that makes yeah. any sense. I mean, we all know what love is. I sound like Forrest Gump here. I know what love is, <laughs> but you know, you start to question. Wait a minute, have I never really known what love is, or is is love a feeling? Is love something you can rationalize? Is it a combination of the two? I mean, is it? It's it's a it's a complicated thing, or it's extremely simple, and I'm overcomplicating it. No, no, it's extremely complicated. Because uh, I know, I I don't know, man. The thing is, is that there's, she knew that there's a girl out there in the world that just the, the mention of her name changes something like, like chemically in me. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it wasn't happening with her. 
Yeah, that is tough or impossible to overcome. Impossible is uh, is probably the best word to use. Yep. But yep. The, you nothing know, you can do about that. There's nothing I can do about that, and it's hard too because that feeling is never really subsided. It's it's always she's right. It's going to always be there, but I don't think I'll ever be able to resolve it. But then again, never say never. No, no, I never can, and you know. The sucky you never thing know is, you never know what the road's going to look like you know even you know a year from now well the, the here's the sucky part is that you start to now you know i i enjoy being a single man in a three-bedroom luxury condominium on the west coast of costa rica <laughs> don't get me wrong right i i have no issue uh it, finding a social life here um but in terms of a relationship uh you really start calling into question what it is that you're looking for and what matters. And moreover, the older you get, you may irrationally start questioning, what am I willing to compromise? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You start going, I just, I, I refuse to, and maybe this is the, maybe I'm immature in this fashion, but I don't care. I just, you just, I just refuse to, to lay down and go, well, you know, time's ticking away. Better settle on something, you know? Yep. Listen to the biological clock. That's right, because, you know, my <laughs> womb is closing. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, the, I... I mean, who am I to talk to you about this since, you know, I'm so much less experienced and younger, but the thing that I can say um, has worked for me is once I decided that love was nothing other than a decision, um to mutually embark on a course of action. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked back. For more information on this podcast Stand by. and all the latest news from the Five <laughs> Gallon Empire, simply visit fivegallonsound.com. We have cookies. You know, during the tunes, um, Jacob and I are, are trying to assess what love is. And mm -hmm. I think we've come to some conclusion, but you know what it is too, Jacob, is that for me, uh, I have to be getting my... You know, there's that really silly expression where it's like, I'm, I'm really focusing on me right now. Yeah, it's silly. I know it is, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm really getting myself to a, a spiritually centered place, a place of health and balance. And and when I'm comfortable enough with myself, I feel like I'm going to be ready to to open my heart. Mm -hmm. And there's, I, I think it's a totally valid way to look at things. I don't think it's the only way. Uh, there's almost never, you know, only one way to look at it because Sometimes, um, you know, I've found that I, I find myself and I, I become a healthier, more balanced person by loving somebody else because mm. um, I can look past my own flaws when they can. And it's, it's uh, there's power in both uh, directions, but there's absolutely truth to the idea that, you know, you got to kind of forgive yourself before you can forgive other people and you have to love yourself before you can love other people and all those kinds of things. Yeah, pick your favorite cliche. It's a cliche for a reason. Right, it's because it's been said over and over and over and over again. Yeah, it may not be true. It's just been repeated enough. <laughs> yeah. Fact remains, though, is that, you know, I and I, I'm a big believer in the impossible. Uh, as I sit here, though, today, I've got some pretty remarkable odds against me of, of finding a good fit, um, you know, because I have my own conditions that, that make things complicated. Uh, and then the, the requisites on both ends of, of what... Uh, a good match for me would look like and how much of what I am she would be able to tolerate makes those <laughs> two pieces of the puzzle a, a tough fit right yep but I think you're you're you got the right perspective in that you're not um, kind of waiting for the one you're not um, sitting back and saying well I need a perfect person mm -hmm. because th those don't exist and you know you the point isn't that you find the right person. The point is what you decide to do with that person. But well, yeah, there's nothing wrong with waiting until you've got somebody in, who is willing to kind of go down that road with you. Yeah, that's interesting because you're always trying to find someone that you, what you're celebrating is, is, is the beauty of the other individual as opposed to Absolutely. the beauty of the other individual as combined with you. You know, it's, it's more that just, it's, it's finding love and in this sort of, I don't know, it's it's being enamored with someone to a degree where you you just you're amazed by them you're fascinated by them you just you can't not be around them 
Yep. And they are feeling the same way about you to the point where all your needs get taken care of, even though you're busy taking care of the other person's needs. Hmm. Everything and else is a cycle. Everything else is just sponsors, I guess. <laughs> like that emusic.com. That's a great place to go over and get all your independent music needs fulfilled. Emusic.com, freshbooks.com for all your online invoicing, and hover.com for all portions of the day's of program your are domain produced needs. by means of tape recording. This one is mood ring. So that's the way the show goes, like that. There we go. I enjoy that topic at the end. It's a nice topic. Yeah, that was good. It was a nice little closure. Maybe we should talk about love more. <laughs> huh. Huh. All right, brother. Look, I gotta, I gotta um, edit the show up because I'm starting to feel kind of pukey again. To tell you the truth. Yeah. But uh, this has been nice. Great talking to you, my friend. Really great. Yeah, we should do this more often. I would like that. You, we should do an E6W. An E6W. E6W. Every six weeks, we should get together and talk for oh. an hour. Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Do you use like Google Calendar or anything weird like that? Uh, you know, I used to. I've actually gotten rid of it. I had some compatibility issues um, with my Mac, but I think I can. I think I've still got it linked up. You just want to like send me a. Well, I'm gonna send you uh, like an invite to a meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Try that. And I'll, I'll make sure it syncs up. If it doesn't all. Well, the good thing is, is I'm gonna send it. you right now. There's gonna be a repetition of this every six weeks. Okay. And I'm gonna send it to you. And then you can put it into whatever calendar program you use so that uh, ahead of this, every six weeks, this will show up on your calendar and it'll remind you. You know what I found yep. is that there's, there's, if you get together with somebody every month, sometimes it's just too often. And it's not because you don't want to. It's just it's impossible to make that happen. You know, mm -hmm. you end up canceling on each other so much that you just give up. If, yeah. To say I'm going to get together with you like every two months, it's like, well, you're not going to do that because who's going to remember to do that? Right. So every you just six, got the nice in-betweener. Yeah, every six weeks. I get together like with, with friends that, you know how it's been. Like you, you, meet, you met all in, these great people in Costa Rica that live like all over the world now. Right. And you say to yourself, God, I better stay in touch with these people. How am I going to do that? It's like you, you do a hard stop after one hour every six weeks, like a meeting. Mm -hmm. And you know, because it's now it's like coming up to the end. It's to the top of the hour, man. I got to wrap. We're done. Yep. And it's, if you have that agreement in place... You become, so much easier. it's so much easier because you don't have that awkward. It's like, oh, I don't really feel like talking to them. But if you know, it's only going to be 30 minutes and it's going to be hard stop after 30 minutes, no matter what you just do it. Right. Yeah. So I accepted that invite and it's not showing up yet, but I will figure out. So the next one would be when? So what's, I, what's six weeks from today? See, I don't even know. I let my calendar tell me what to do. <laughs> it's the That's best. Great. It is. Yeah. Okay, I think it's going to be the 26th of May, but I'm not sure it gets on there somehow. Yeah, because I'm thinking about doing just a regular rotation of, of co-hosts. Uh-huh. I think it'd be nice if just like every six weeks it's a different, it's it's that host, you know? Yeah, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. All right, man, I'm going to go and uh, either throw up or, or, or poo uh, liquid. Okay. <laughs> or both. I'll have fun with that. I might, I might. Great talking to you, my friend. Really good. Yeah, good talking to you too, man. Okay, good we'll luck with everything. Again in six weeks. Send my best to the, not the missus, but the, the female that uh, is in your life. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. All right, thanks, Jacob. God bless. Yep, you too. See ya.